Harriet Rosetto, good morning. Good morning, Sergio. Good morning. Dr. Fontanese. That's right. Okay, so you and I have been talking for the last few months about recovery, sobriety, success, relapse, and how do we make sense of all those terms. You've been running Beit Shuva for 30 years. I know the first question you get from parents and family members is, what's your success rate? And you say to that what? It always annoys me when I get that question. Yeah. And I say it's very hard to define success since this is a chronic, relapsing, progressive condition, and it can't just be defined in terms of length of sobriety. Right. So I'm, I'm questioning, finally, after 30 years the whole measure of success in terms of just staying sober, because Mm -hmm. I think that's confusing the symptom with the disease, that the symptom is the drugs and alcohol and other things that people do, um, and, and sobriety is the response to the symptom, but recovery is about the disease, what underlies the condition. Right. Right. And I think what, what really crystallized that for me is when I was doing the research here, And I called a woman back, a a participant, a former resident here, six months after she had completed the program and kind of checked in and said, what's up? What's going on? How are you? And she said that she was still drinking, not to the point of intoxication, but still drinking. Um, And she was working again. She had reconnected with family and friends. She had a sponsor. She was going to meetings. And so when it came time to classify her as a success or failure, I thought to myself, well, If sobriety is just the only metric, then perhaps she's a failure. But if we look at all the other indicators of where she has grown and and improved and changed her life, she's definitely a success. And I would agree with that. And and I think that that challenges what has been the AA model of the metric being solely sobriety. Right. And that even if you've been in recovery, say, for 10 years and you have a drink one week and you lose all your time and you become a newcomer. Mm-hmm. And I think in some ways that's, that's counterproductive because some people don't come back because they're ashamed. Right. And it feeds the shame and shame underlies the disease. So I think that in some ways it doesn't work. Right. But that does create a problem, too, in terms of then people thinking they have permission to drink or use when they're in early recovery. And that's a danger as well. So it's not black and white is what you're telling. It's not black and white. Right. And it's interesting that recovery is about not being black and white, but sobriety is about being black and white. It is a black and white white. measure, absolutely. Right. And when you do relapse, when someone does relapse, they don't really lose or not at all the experiences and the growth they've made. Correct. That almost reminds me of Teshuva, just the 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 ability to respond, to have a new response and to keep going forward and 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 learning from the errors you've made. And and that presumes the spiritual Teshuva model presumes that people are going to make mistakes and they're not going to be perfect. And part of recovery is celebrating one's imperfection. So to require perfection is also, um, you know, counterproductive in yeah. many ways. It's very complicated. It's complicated stuff. It is. So then what do you do when someone relapses? What's, what should be the response? What happens? What, do we punish them? Do we, I mean, do they start over? Do they lose everything? Well, A few times, we used to believe that, okay, if you relapse and you're an intern or you're in work therapy, that you would have to go all the way back and be in in primary care again. And a few times, that didn't seem right to me, that somebody had been doing really well and had a lapse. And I think Mm -hmm. we started to distinguish between lapses and relapses. Right. And they were doing really well at the job, and and they were necessary. And so instead of saying, okay, you lose your job and you're going all the way back down to primary care, I felt, look, you screwed up. You cost us. Yeah. (laughs) Your punishment is you better continue to work and do better than you were doing before. And that happened to work out very well for this particular person. And you had a great expression. You called it the rehab womb. That someone who had completed six, seven months of treatment didn't need more treatment and to be brought into the rehab room and and almost, because people relapse at the point of transitions and when they're feeling vulnerable and 
And and in some ways, I think that they relapse so they don't have to be responsible. Right. And it's almost like then rewarding that behavior by saying, okay, now you don't have to get up and go to work and be responsible. You can come back and go to groups. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Well, good talking with you. Lovely. And Thank you. To be continued. <laughs> yes, I think this is something that we really need to um, put out in the world because I think the model um, could be tweaked and work better for people. And we're here to challenge the model for sure. Yes, we are. We're rebellious. Yes, we are. All right.